Anderson family. Hurry up, Mary. I have to meet that 2.30 train, and I'm already late. But I thought you were going to take me to the hairdressers, Oliver. I just can't take the time, Mary. I'm meeting a fellow by the name of Childs, a big buyer, and the boss won't stand for any side errands. Well, it won't take but a minute, darling. Okay. Are you ready to go right now? Well, no, but I could be in ten minutes, mm. and I just have to have my hair done for PTA tomorrow. Would you like to have the ladies point at you and say, her husband isn't working anymore, you know? Uh-oh, here we go again, folks. <laughs> Now let's visit the Anderson family. Well, this whole thing started when Oliver Anderson came home unexpectedly in the middle of the afternoon and told Mary he had to meet a train in half an hour. A big buyer is coming in on this train and the boss has given strict instructions that Oliver give the buyer plenty of attention. Right now, Oliver Anderson is putting on the rush act as he enters his home. Mary! Mary! Yes, what is it? What are you doing home so early, Oliver? I can't take the time to explain. I'll tell you as I go along. I'm to meet a train in a half an hour. Now, where's my clean shirt? Sports shoes and my brown suit. Oh, well, I haven't ironed yet. Your sports shoes are at the shoemakers and your brown suit's down to the cleaners. I see. Does Junior have an extra pair of Levi's I could use? Oh, now, look. Calm down, Senator. Oh. What train are you to meet and why? Well, a big buyer's coming in and the boss has laryngitis, so I'm the selected one to make the deal. I'm also supposed to dress accordingly. Well, it won't take but a minute. I'll iron a shirt for you. Now, I'll get it, Mary. Get started on the shirt. All right. Uh, hi, Oliver. Oh, it's Homer. Well, come on in, I guess. Well, thank you. I've seen you drive up, Oliver, and I, I thought maybe someone were sick or something. No, no, everyone's well, and I have to hurry. Uh, well, where are you going? To meet a train. Oh, I see. Well, uh... I thought I'd ride downtown with you if you was going right back. Well, I'll be leaving in five minutes, I hope. Yeah, I gotta see the hotel man about some cement work. I'm meeting him in the lobby, 245. It's right on your way. Okay, come on in and sit down. How's yeah. Martha Homer? Oh, she's got a slight cold. Oh, that's too bad. Look, Homer, Mary's ironing her shirt. Don't talk to her now. I've been giving her peppermint tea and stuff. It seems to kind of relax her. I remember one well, time... Maybe she should get huh? more rest, Homer. Look, oh. Homer, wait out in the car for me, will you? You're just holding up things. Oh, wait in the car, huh? Yeah. Uh, you ain't gonna take long. No, I'll hurry. Now go on. The car's out and back. Well, get, 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 get on your toes, fella. Can't keep a man waiting. You know. I'll be right there. Now, how's that shirt coming, Mary? You just take it easy now, Oliver. Everything's gonna be all right. You're gonna make it. Now, will this striped shirt go with the blue suit? Mm, I think it looks nice. Well, let's have it. And bring me that old blue suit. Mm -hmm. I'll jump into it and fly. Maybe the client is near by. There you are, dear. Quick, a clean handkerchief. Now, now hurry, Mary. Look, my shoes. Uh -huh. Thanks. Uh -huh. Now, my coat. Yeah. Here, hold, hold it. Oh, Quick. But, Oliver, dear, wait a minute. I don't have the time. Here, give me a kiss. Um, Wish me luck. I do, dear. I'll but... be back with a fat order. But, Oliver, wait a minute. I can't, Mary. Goodbye. Oliver Anderson, come back here and put on your pants. Uh, pardon me, is, uh, is the train in yet from the east? How should I know? I don't work here. I'm waiting just like you. Oh, oh. Well, maybe this is the train standing over here, huh? Uh... Did you see a man get off the train? Look, brother, I know your kind, and if you annoy me further, I shall report you. Oh, oh, well, I'm, I'm sorry. Hmm. 
I'll wait here by the gate. This red flower in my lapel is the sign. He'll probably look me up. Now, where's that card? Oh, oh yeah, here it is. I see Childs. I better remember that name. Excuse me. Are you by any chance Mr. Thompson of Tops, Torrance, and Thompson Company? Uh, well, no, I'm, uh, uh, Thompson? No, well, no, no, he's, he's ill with laryngitis, but I'm with the firm. My name's Anderson. Oh, thank goodness. I thought I'd never locate you. But I looked for the red flower, and here you are. Uh-huh, yeah. I'm waiting for someone. And I see Childs. I'm I see Childs. Oh, that's fine. But, uh, you're I see Childs? Of course. Ilgrid Childs. Are you surprised? <laughs> well, well, no, no, I, I thought it would be a man. Oh, the same thing happens lots of times. Oh, does it? Well, Mr. Anderson, according to my wire, there is a room reserved for me at the hotel. Oh, oh, yes, yes, of course. Here, 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 let me have your bag. I want to clean up and get a little rest before we look over the stock. Oh, oh, sure. Right this way now. My, my car's outside. Uh, Miss Childs. Oh, why don't you just call me Ilgrid? Well, it, it would be easier. <laughs> Ilgrid. <laughs> uh, Go in, Mr. Gilroy. Here's your, uh, here's your key, Miss Childs. It's 304. I'll, uh, I'll carry your bag over to the elevator. I'll wait down here for you, and then you, you probably want to eat. You're very kind, Mr. Anderson. It's just part of our firm's service is all. <laughs> Who's that elderly gentleman in the yellow sweater? He's been simply staring at it. Where? Oh. Uh, oh, that's a neighbor of mine, Homer Meister. He's here on business. Oh, are they opening a carnival in the lobby? Carnival? Oh, oh you mean the sweater and the cap. <laughs> and I do believe he wants to speak to you. Here he comes. Oh, he's all right. Uh, I ain't met my man yet, Oliver. Oh, well, he'll be along. Uh, I suppose so. Mr. Uh, uh, I don't believe I've met the young lady. The young lady? Uh, oh, uh, yes. Uh, that's, that, uh, that's right. You, you haven't. Miss Childs, uh, may I present Miss Meister? I'm simply thrilled. <laughs> yeah, Ray. Well, I, I like to be right neighborly myself. Of course, there ain't nothing personal. Eh? Oh, of course. <laughs> of course, I understand. Yeah, uh, going to be in town long? Just a day is all. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, I'd like to have you see our park before you leave town. It's awful pretty this time of the year. And the... Uh, Benches are right comfortable, too. Uh, look, look, Homer, Miss Childs mm. is tired now. She doesn't have much time, and she has to eat yet. Oh, well, I drop in and out of the hotel during the day and an early evening. Uh, thought maybe not to know anybody in town, Miss Childs. Oh, but I'll be terribly busy, Mr. Mm. Meister, and, and what would we do with Mr. Anderson? Well, well, yes, of course, we got to think of him, too. Look, Homer, <laughs> go sit down in that chair. I'll be with you in a couple of minutes. Chair? Yeah. Oh, 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 I get it. Sure, I'll wait for you. And I'm mighty happy I had this little talk with you, Miss Childs. I enjoyed it myself, Mr. Meister. Thank you. Uh, I don't, don't know how to apologize for Homer. He's kind of forward. Oh, but he's delightful. Huh? You can't hurt a nice old man like him. I enjoyed it. Really, I did. His eyes just sparkle. Well, that's uh, pretty nice of you to say that. Oh, don't give it another thought, Mr. Anderson. Going up. Hmm? Oh, here's my elevator. If you'll be kind enough to wait in the lobby for me, I'll be right down. And I'd like to get a bite to eat. Yeah, well, I'll have a table reserved. Uh, anytime you're ready to eat. Right. Hey, Mr. Carter. Mr. Carter. Now, uh, I'm not going home yet, Homer. Oh, he ain't, eh? <laughs> you know, Homer, you're a pretty mm. nice guy, but... Uh, oh, no, no. Wait a minute, Oliver. I don't go around talking. That isn't <laughs> the point. She's a very nice girl. Yep, yep, certainly is. I don't want to hear any more about it. This is a business deal. Yep, yep. I ain't saying one thing one way or t'other, but, uh, well, every man's got his own life to live. Uh, you say you ain't going home yet? <laughs> no, I have to take Miss Childs to dinner first. Well, now, of course, it ain't none of my business, Oliver, but Mary's a good woman, and, 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 and uh, I know that. And, and someone's going to misunderstand, especially with a good-looking babe like her. I don't see why I have to stand here and defend myself when I haven't done anything. Well, I ain't asking you to. Well, then go on home and forget it. I'm going to be busy. I'm afraid I put you out terribly, Mr. Anderson. Oh, no, don't give it another thought. I get paid for doing a job, and this is a very pleasant one. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> how's the food? 
very good. Oh, here you are, Anderson. Huh? Oh, 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 excuse me. Uh, <clears throat> Miss Childs, uh, Mr. Briggs, another neighbor of mine. Oh, how do you do? <laughs> Thank you. I just met Hober Beister. He said you were uh, in the hotel. I just had to see you. Uh, slide over a bit, uh, will you, young lady? Uh, well, now, slide over? Here, now, now, wait, Briggs. Uh, get in on this side if you must sit down. Oh, very well. I hope I'm uh, not crowding you. Maybe I'd better stand. Don't, don't. I'm perfectly comfortable. Anderson, uh, mm -hmm. Millicent is uh, waiting up the, up the street. I must have a check cashed. But I, I don't have a, a check with me. Uh, do you have a black one? They'll give you one in the lobby. The lobby? Yeah. Very well, I'll inquire there. You're, uh, <laughs> you're new around here, aren't you, young lady? Uh, look, Briggs, Miss Childs is here on business. Now, if you don't mind, we'd like to be alone. I should think you would be embarrassed, Anderson. However, it's no affair of mine. We have divorce courts for this sort of thing. Look, Miss Childs, I, I, I'm sorry, this whole thing... <laughs> oh, but I'm enjoying it immensely. Please, Mr. Anderson, believe me. Oh, well, then, as long as you're going to... Not going to spend anything, Briggs. Now, move on out and give me back my chair. Very well, Anderson. But you regret this humiliation. Mary? Mary! Hmm. Junior? Huh? Oh, hi, Pop. Come on in. Where's Mom? Mom? Yeah. Gee, I don't know, Pop. She was so mad when she left, she didn't even say goodbye to me. Mom left? Yeah. Gee, I haven't done a thing, honest. Well, what happened? I, I, I mean, what's she mad about? I didn't hear. All I know is Mrs. Meister came over and Mom was putting up some pickles. Oh, oh I see. Martha was over, huh? Uh, what'd she say? I don't know, but I heard Mom working herself up into a rage. And when I went out to see what was going on, she threw the whole pan of pickles out in the backyard. Oh, so that's it. Homer went home and told Martha, and Martha came over here and... And told her uh, what, Pop? Uh, nothing. I think Mom left some kind of note before she went. She asked where a pencil was. Note? Hmm. Yeah, here it is. Have gone... Huh? Have gone to Mother's. <laughs> Now, back to the Anderson family. Well, Oliver Anderson has met the train which brought a client to the Tupps, Torrance, and Thompson Company. The client turned out to be a very lovely young lady. As Oliver escorted her to her hotel, he met Homer Meister, the neighbor next door. And while dining with the young lady, Oliver had another brush with a neighbor, Mr. Briggs. Oliver got the order, but when he returned home, he found a note saying that Mary had gone to her mother's. And so to carry on further, here's Oliver talking to Junior. Look, Junior, here's the whole story. The client I met was a young lady. Pretty? Uh, uh, kind of. Gee, no wonder. No wonder what? Oh, nothing. Look, I'm trying to explain that Martha must have told Mary I, I was seen by Homer with a young lady. And it was just a client. All you had to do was tell Mom the client was a girl. I didn't know it till she got off the train. Of course, I understand, Pop. Mm, sure, you do. But Mom doesn't. <laughs> well, look, it isn't like her to fly off the handle without first finding out about it. Maybe Mrs. Meister didn't tell her, Pop. Hmm? Maybe Mrs. Briggs did, because Mom talked to her on the phone before she left. Oh, oh, I see. That's another place it could come from. I guess a fella has to be pretty careful in a small town like this. Yeah. How do you mean? Well, nothing. Nothing's wrong. But still, a whole family is broken up. And they talk about kids going haywire. Well, don't you worry any more about it. If Mom wants to act that way, she'll get no cooperation from me. Where are you going, Pop? I'm, I'm going to the Briggs. I want to find out just what she told your mother. <laughs> I can't understand why you act so evasive, Free Baron. I'm angry. Uh, I a don't pet? see why. If Anderson was impolite to you, you must consider the source. I'll, I'll scratch his eyes out. Now, Free Baron. I'll, I'll pull his tie off. I'll, I'll tear it to shreds. Please, Free Baron, control yourself. I, I'm angry. Why don't you tell me just what he did to you? It's between him and me, a pet. What have you and this Anderson been doing? 
Nothing, my dear, nothing. It's mighty suspicious to me. He's done nothing. Still, you're angry. Please, now, Free Baron, control yourself. And please adjust your toupee. Uh, good evening, Mrs. Briggs. May I step in? I don't want any trouble now, Anderson. I don't either. I've got enough. Free Baron is in here. Come in. Yeah, I want to see him. What do you want, Anderson? I want to know what your wife said to Mary on the phone. Me? Why, nothing. Nothing at all. Well, he must have said something. I came home and found a note saying she was going to her mother's. Probably needed a rest. How do you mean that? Just a moment, pet. I'll handle this. <coughs> Anderson, you're acting in a very obnoxious manner. Huh? And I will not have my wife insulted by every peasant in the block. Why? What are you afraid of? Yes, Free Baron. What are you afraid of? I'm afraid of nothing. I had nothing to do with your misfortunes at home, Anderson. Then how did Mary know we were with that girl? Free Baron, you didn't tell me. Oh, he just kissed him. Free Baron. I barely passed the time of day, my dear. Yeah, he only wanted to get a check cashed. Oh, I see you're both in this together. Well, how do you mean that? Simply this, Anderson. Your little alibi won't work about the check. Cause Free Baron cannot cash a check unless it's countersigned by me. Well, maybe it was some other check. Where did you get another check, Free Baron? I refuse to answer. Very well. You'll never forget this little episode, Free Baron. Humiliating me in front of a neighbor. I don't get it, Free Baron. Millicent knew nothing about your escapade. Well, it wasn't an escapade. Only you and Homer knew I was with her. Then perhaps you'd better look up Homer. In the meantime, you'll excuse me while I help Millicent pack her clothes. <laughs> Yep, yep. What is it? Look, Homer, let me in. What for? I want to talk to you. Well, make it snappy. I got to get back downtown. The fella at the hotel wants to see me about some cement work. The fella, huh? Yep. Look, Homer, if you don't stay away from this child, she'll call the cops, and I'm not kidding. Now, wait a minute, Oliver Anderson. Oh, you wait, bud. Look, did you tell Martha that you met me in the hotel lobby with this client of mine? Well, in a kind of roundabout way, I did, yep. Well, she ran right over and told Mary. She didn't do no such Don't thing. Don't tell me she didn't. Mary was so mad she threw out a whole pan full of pickles. Oh, shucks. I didn't think Martha would ever do a thing like it, Oliver. Well, she did. Yes, yeah, so help me, I didn't. Well, the harm's been done. Well, I'll tell Mary different. She believes me. Mary's gone. Gone to her mother's. Oh, say, you know, that is bad, ain't it? Mm. Why don't you go and bring her back? Uh, I'll tell her it ain't so. Well, it's too late for that. Martha's put me in a pretty bad spot, Homer. Well, now, if she's gone and done that, she'll answer to me for it. Right's right, and I'll stand right up and tell her so, too, Dag Nevitt. Oh, never mind, Homer. The damage has been done already. Well, maybe you're right. Of course, there ain't need of me breaking up my home, too. That's right. Yes. But I'm telling you this, Homer. If you go down to that hotel to see Miss Childs, you're wasting your time. I am, eh? Yeah. <laughs> you just don't know women... Didn't you hear me invite her to see our park? Yes, I did. And being a lady, she didn't tell you what she thought of you. <laughs> Jealous, huh? No. Anyhow, she's gone. She took the train back this afternoon. Oh, she did, eh? Yeah. Oh, me. So you can take off your cowboy suit and pick up life where you left off. Eh, uh, yep, yep. Maybe you're right, Oliver. I uh, sure acted the fool. Martha is a good woman, and I reckon I should appreciate her. And you should teach her not to carry talk around where it isn't wanted. Look here, young fella. Don't you worry none about it, Oliver. I'll sure give her a piece of my mind about that. Well, now you're getting somewhere. Now, if you'll just wait a minute, I'll, I'll walk as far as your house with you. You better stay away from that hotel. Oh, I ain't going down there. I just thought I'd uh, drop it at the gym cafe a minute. Ooh. Not to see Antoinette Murphy, the waitress. <laughs> well, now she's a good kid. She's never seen any of them seashells I got at the beach, and I thought maybe she'd kind of like to look them over. You know what I mean? Is <laughs> <laughs> that you, Mom? No. Nobody home. Gee, I'm hungry. Gee, Pop, when do we eat? Eat? 
Yeah, when do we eat? Maybe there's some junk in the icebox, huh? Could be. Let's look. Well, there's some pickles in the backyard. I guess Mom must be pretty mad. Well, so am I. Why didn't she talk to me first? Why does she listen to these gossiping neighbors? Anything good to eat in the icebox, Pop? Hmm. Some of that stew. Suppose we could warm it up a bit. Gee, stew again? Well, you're hungry, aren't you? <sighs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Gee, it's lonesome without Mom. Well, it's all her fault, Junior. Maybe if you told her you were sorry. Sorry? Sorry about what? I haven't done anything. Maybe Mom's crying and everything. I don't see why. She must feel awful. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose she does. Hand me that pot holder, son. Well, you just can't pull up your roots and start over. Yeah, here, Pop. Thanks. Well, I suppose I can spend my vacations with you, Pop. Well, sure, you Vicky. What are you talking about? Well, I mean, if Mom can't get over the shock and everything. That's your mom now. Oh, yeah. Now, just act like nothing happened. Give her the cold treatment. Okay. Oh, I've never been so angry in my life. Never. Welcome home, Mom. Mother kept me talking for hours. What's wrong with you, Oliver? You decided to come home, huh? Why, why, of course. Well, you've heard Martha's story. Now, do you want to hear mine? Yours? Oh, what do you know about pickles? What does pickles have to do with it? Martha told me the wrong way to fix the pickles. I was so mad at the way they came out, I threw the whole pan of them out. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. You didn't go to your mother's just because Martha told you... Oh, of course not. I went to mother's to get the recipe she uses. Uh, I left you a note. Surely you saw it. Pop found it. Oh, wait, you, you mean you only went to your mother's to get a recipe and you're not angry? Oh, of course not, silly. <laughs> I met Mr. Thompson on the street. He told me what a wonderful sale you'd made. I'm really proud of you, darling. You are? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, did he tell you who the client was? Oh, come now. Don't be childish. Huh? Of course he did. He said she was a very attractive young lady. Oh. And she complimented you highly. Oh. Oh? Oh. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> Gee, Mom, you're sure broad-minded, uh -huh. isn't she, Pop? Well, well, certainly. What made you think she could be otherwise? Mm, now, if you'll get out of the way, I'll get us something to eat in a hurry. Oh, gee, you're really back home to stay, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I mean, uh, you didn't believe what Martha said? Martha? Well, she didn't say anything that... Oh. Oh, I think that's Mr. Briggs. He was coming this way when I saw him. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Junior, tell Briggs I can't see him now. Okay. But hurry up dinner, Mom. Uh, look, after this, when you go to your mother's, put down the reason, too, will you? I thought you left because the client turned out to be a girl. Oh, how silly. What's wrong in showing a client around the store? After all, business is business. <laughs> Gee, that's well. I can't help it if your father is busy. I have to see this very book. Now, now, wait a minute, Briggs. We're just going to eat. I can't help that, Anderson. I don't care how you treat your own family, but you'll not break up mine. Why, Mr. Briggs, what's wrong? Uh, um, I'll go over, Mary. I, I won't be in a minute. Well, I don't get it. Uh, Mr. Anderson will be over in a few minutes, Mr. Briggs. Very well. I'll not be blamed for Anderson's escapade. Uh, I'll be in my room, Mom. When dinner's ready, call me, huh? Wait, Junior. What does he mean, Oliver? What escapade? Oh, nothing. I, I just took the client to lunch at the hotel, and Millicent is angry because Briggs sat down with us. Oh, how cozy. Well... You didn't tell me you took her to the hotel to eat. Well, I didn't have a chance. And how many times have I asked you to take me there to eat? Oh... Uh, how many times have you said it's awfully expensive? It was on the firm. I had to do it. Now, what do Millicent and Martha think about me? Oliver, you should have more respect for me than now to... Now, look, oh, Mary, just... please try to understand. Uh-oh, uh here we go again, folks.
The Anderson Family is written by Howard Swart, directed by Herb Litton, and features Dick Lane as Oliver, Louise Arthur as Mary, Walter Tetley as Junior, and Herbert Rollinson as Homer. Others in the cast were Jenny Johnson as Mrs. Briggs, George Peroni as Freebairn, and Jacqueline DeWitt. Music by Gordon Kibbe, sound effects by Ray Erlenborn, and your announcer is Ken Peters. The Anderson Family is a Hollywood Broadcasters production, transcribed from Hollywood. (laughs) ¶¶